Hello, hello, my friends. This is your tutorial to teach you how you're going to be accessing your math information for our online learning. So once you log on to your login screen, you're going to go to this greenish tile. It's got a big old P on it, P for Pearson. Pearson is the name of the company that created our math book. So we're just going to click right here on this tile. Once you click on that tile, it will open you up to this weird screen. Uh, all you have to do is come over here to this button that says Pearson Realize. You will have to click on this every time you log in. Just remember, you're clicking on this bottom one, Pearson Realize. Once you click on Pearson Realize, this is your home page for your math screen. Now this middle box right here, this is going to be where you spend a majority of your time, but if you want to look at old pages from the math book or um, that would be this browse area. Now you can access these either up here, they say the same thing, browse, browse, classes, classes, grades, grades, um, but like I said, this classes right here is where you're going to want to be. All you have to do is click right here in the middle. Now this screen up here on our classes page shows you all of the assignments that your teacher has posted for you. Now I know that we're giving you instructions for them, um, so make sure you're checking Schoology to see which assignments or if, there are, if you don't have to do the whole assignment, which numbers you're going to be doing. But to access something that you haven't started, all you would have to do is click on it. Now, this isn't going to be what I'm going to show you first. Um, if you work on something and you have to stop for some reason, you come back to it later, it would be here through this in progress tile. So these are things you have not started. This is where you would find assignments that you have started in progress it means you're doing it right now. When you submit assignments, they'll be over here in, com in the completed section. But as you can see, we haven't completed any assignments yet. So I'm going to click into this first assignment. It brings you to this page and to start it again, all you have to do, click on it. It's loading, everyone's favorite screen. All right, so for some assignments, you're not going to have to do every page or they might have multiple pages that you need to work with. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to change the page that you're on. So to change the page that you're on, you're gonna need to come down here to this bottom bar. Next takes you to the next page. Back takes you to the page that you were just on. So as you can see, I was playing around in here a little bit already. Oh, my work is gone. That's weird. It was there for a second. Hmm. All right, no worries. So this is the first page that you're going to need to be completing. And with this page, there are a lot of different tools that are going to help you. It functions similarly to Nearpod, so you'll be familiar with a lot of these functions, um, but it's a different site, so it's just a little bit different. If you ever need to move or edit something around on your screen, this arrow is what comes up automatically. If there's something you want to write, for instance, this first thing says circle, all of the terms that match each description. So I'm going to go ahead and code my question just like always using the pencil. Now notice with the pencil you can draw squiggly shapes. This is just your free form or if you are only underlining you can also change it over here to this straight line. This means that no matter how you draw your line will be absolutely straight across. You can also change the size of your pencil, whether you've got it really small, so you can write small, whether it's really big, if you're just trying to draw something. I like my pencil about here because I can see it, but it's not so big that it takes over everything. You can also change the colors of your pencil. Just make sure that what, you're, what color you're choosing can be seen on the screen. So circle all the terms that match. I'll show you how to do this first one. So my first is a quadrilateral. Okay, so I'd be thinking to myself, what do these shapes look like? Maybe you're gonna write yourself notes. Oh, I know that quadrilateral means four sides. So I'm gonna write myself a little four right there just to remind me. All right, does a square have four sides? One, two, three, four, yeah, it does. You can draw the shape if you want to remind yourself a rhombus. What does a rhombus look like? Oh, yep, definitely still has four sides. 
rhombus trapezoid. What was a trapezoid? Oh yeah, trapezoid, of course. One, two, three, four sides, there they are. Polygon, well polygon could be any shape with three sides or more. So no, that one doesn't have to be a quadrilateral. But, so that's how you would circle or write yourself little notes just with the pencil. Now, some of these assignments I'm going to click over to the next page to show you some of these assignments you're not going to want to use this pencil now notice for every new page you will have to go back and click to the tool it just automatically flicks it to that arrow so for every new page you start on you'll need to change your tool let's say though that I am working on a slightly more complicated question like how are the shapes in groups one and two different now as I look at them, I say, okay, these all have one, two, three sides. And notice that these have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. Do they all have six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, they do. So these all have six sides. So I noticed a difference. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that. They, uh-oh. Ooh. So as you can see, writing with a pencil, not ideal. What I recommend, if you've got a question that you need to write, I'm going to recommend this little button right here. This is going to be your best friend. This is the text box maker. So for the text box maker, you click that T, it'll make you a little text box to start right away. So I don't want this text box to be here, though. So all you have to do is click on it, and then as you hold down the click, you can just drag it down to where you want. Drag it down to where you want. To type in it, all you have to do is click in it one more time. And once I click, how are they different? Group one has three sides and group two has six sides. So that's how you can show us. If you need your text box to be bigger or smaller, you can do that using this little blue circle right there. And remember, to move it, all you have to do is click on it and drag it to, and hold down your click, and you drag it to wherever you want. All right. So I'm going to show you a couple of other tools. Like I said, your main tools are going to be your pencil to draw, circle, and code your text, or your T for your text box. However, let's say you've got a multiple choice. You really just want to fill in some bubbles. You can use this stamp. This is for counters. You can choose either red or yellow counters. You can also use this as a math tool. So let's say it's asking me to do three times four. I could make an array of three columns of three with four. Oh, I know that. Nice. Whatever. So you can also use these as a math resource. You can use them to fill in the dots. Um, you can you also have access here to different place value blocks. We've got from one, tens, hundreds, all the way up to a thousand cube. Let's say you did something, but you didn't actually mean to do it and you need to erase it. This little box right here is our eraser. You can make that eraser bigger or smaller. I'm going to just get rid of these things because I didn't really want those there. Let's say you accidentally did something you didn't mean to. You can also undo it here with this back button or redo something if you're like, oh wait, no, I did want to get rid of that. Boop, right over there. So once again, we've got our arrow to move around, our pencil to draw, our stamps as counters, we've got an eraser, undo, redo, and then this is your text box friend. Um, this is if you wanted to draw different shapes, if you needed to make a number line, so maybe these only have um, standard shapes though, so only things like circles, triangles, squares, and rectangles, but you can use it if you would like to. This is also the clear all page. So let's say you had you did too many mistakes and you just want to start all the way over. You can just click clear all. Now you can also just get rid of normal things. Oops, no, that's delete all. No. You can also just get rid of your normal boxes right here. They've got a little trash can right underneath them. Whenever you finished an assignment, let's say I went through, I did all three pages that I was supposed to for this assignment, I read the information, I answered my questions, right up here is this black button that says turn in. 
you will click this button right here to submit your work to us. If you do not click this button, we do not know that you have finished your assignment. So you have to click turn it in. Let's say you forgot though. Let's say you exited out and you didn't turn it in. First of all, yikes, don't want to do that. But um, you can turn it in later just right here. You can just click turn it in. And then you would say, yes, turn it in. This just says, are you sure? After clicking turn in, the teacher will not see any additional work you complete. Ensure that you complete every activity tab in the assignment before you click turn it in. But then you would just click this yes, turn it in button. All right, and those are the main things you need to know. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Talk to you soon.